government, no rules. Just go out, have a good time, do whatever you like to do. And it's just a bunch of kids getting together and having fun and, you know, not causing trouble. Instead of being out, you know, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, getting into trouble, they go someplace where they all can get together and just have fun. It can be a very beautiful, loving experience, you know, or it can be a very shallow sort of club, you know, experience. It can be whatever you make of it. Um, I think it's the overall attitude and the vibe of the people. It's more of a, it's like a lovey family. It's the music, definitely. It's the music, music, the people. And the lifestyle. When you go to a rave, you can when go I all out. When I see the young kids that are on bad rolls, that looks like zombies. That's, that's, that's the only thing. People who think they're totally lost or they, they're trying to hug trees and they're thinking somebody's there. I've seen people fall in bushes while they're trying to hug a tree. It's not about making money. It's not about going to big shows and being seen with who and what, wearing the right clothes. It's about your friends. I try not to do it too often because I don't want to be known as a clubber and a raver. It's such a subculture, but it's becoming more and more accepted, you know? These are the most well-behaved children that we've ever dealt with, you know. Uh, there wasn't one fight, 5,000 kids. So why would anybody, you know, worry about us then? Uh, my name is DJ3. Uh, let's see. What do I do? Jeez. Uh, DJ, all over the place. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> My name's Steve McClure, I go by DJ Monk. Um, basically DJ throughout the country and resident at the Masquerade in Tampa. I throw rave parties or parties in general. I do one night gigs in warehouses and clubs and um, Oh, God. Um, I turned on a lot of people to the uh, to the house scene, so that's pretty much you know how I got the name. Well, I worked at the Edge for a while, and I've been to all the major raves around so far. My name is Sharma, and I'm a nurse's aide by day, student by day, and a club kid by night. My name is Jason Rockenbach, and I'm a Grady. I'm a server at Grady's American Grill run uh, Hallucination Records with my partner, David Christopher. And as you can see, it's the same nice thing in my visuals, dude. I made that animation of the Euro the same nice. Like, that's fucking, that's what I need, bro. That's all I do. I'm a dancer, I'm a participator, I'm a creator, I am a being. I really don't tell you the truth. I kind of don't really have a real life. Of course you do, my love. Well, of course I do. But it's not real right now because I have not been doing anything for the past couple months. <laughs> I don't know, gosh, I've been uh, involved with uh, techno and house music uh, as far as it being basically a, a full scheme ahead thing in my life for about, uh, it, it'll be four years by this year. I've been in the scene for a while, probably about a year or so. I've always liked, I've always liked um, house music and stuff like that, but it's been about a year for me going to raves. I've been doing this for about five years, and... I guess, I don't know if I'll ever stop. We do a magazine called Trip Magazine, which is myself and uh, Peter Wachowski of Astral Works Records and Grumpy C. We also do the uh, Rabbit in the Moon project on hallucination and remixes and so forth and so on.
techno um, somehow generates some sort of um, stimuli in your brain and gets you into this rhythm where you, the only thing you're focusing on is the music and the dance. You're not worried about anything. You're not thinking about anything. You don't care who's next to you. You don't see couples dancing. You see people dancing by themselves. This is music that you can feel inside you. You can dance. You can, you yeah, know. I like, I like to dance by myself, you know. I don't like to be doing the, you know, the trains and stuff like that where everyone's grinding on top of each other. Yeah, right. A lot of times I just like to be by myself. The most amazing thing that I've ever deduced on my own about house music is that uh, the one form of entertainment, man, where you are completely engulfed in sounds and things that you have never heard, never heard before, and you're entertained. Oh, true. Yeah. It's like it's all about. You know, back in the old days, people would eat quaaludes and go out to discos like my father, and just and he said, I when I was a kid, I used to love to go to those discos, and, and we'd eat quaaludes and have a good time, and it was a very big vibe, just like this is growing right now. In a beautiful world, uh, in a perfect situation, it's where people come together and, to dance, a unifying type event where everyone comes together and dances and hears, you know, a variety of DJs and possibly live performances. It's there to party and, and there for the music and um, to have a good time with their friends, basically. That's how I feel about it anyway. There were these all-night events where you go and you listen to this new, you know, kind of interesting music and stay up all night and meet lots of people and some people would do a lot of drugs. It was just people out celebrating life through song and dance, a positive vibe, um, and people having fun, forgetting about their problems for one night. I think it's um, a lot cheaper to go to an event than a psychiatrist because I know a lot of people that, that leave thoroughly satisfied and it's just almost like all their their negativity has just been flushed out of them and you know then it all builds up once again during the week and then they come out again and it's a very physical um, group of people you put in a, an atmosphere such as a club with lighting that's unreal you know you know music that is so loud and unreal also it's all like technological um, psychedelic everything you go there for that experience you go to a club so that you're in this unreal, ex you know, this unreal environment. In Orlando, the crowd's really docile. Their people are a lot nicer and they're friendly. You know, you go to a party in California, they're carrying guns, you know, and there's fights. It's about having a good time without worrying about anybody tapping on your shoulder and saying, hey, buddy, what are you doing? In, in a lot of ways, what goes on in Central Florida does not happen anywhere else in the U.S. I mean, you never know what's going to happen in these, you know, these parties. It's, it's really a crazy thing setting up in one night, setting up, you know, a 61,000 square foot warehouse and uh, turning it into basically a, a huge party house and you know it's it's really it's really crazy doing it in one night there's not a school that you can go to to be, really be a promoter you have to um, actually do the OJT thing with somebody else or uh, just basically be around for a long time like we have um, and if we could have gotten a college education um, to become a promoter we would have done it we try to be as fair as possible and we try to let other promoters uh, know when we're going to be doing an event it's one of the best things I've seen is more organizations between promoters and DJs and club owners. I mean, and 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 over the couple of years that I've been involved in the scene, I've been able to read people more on, on what they're trying to get out of it. Are they trying to get money out of this party? Are they trying to get people together to educate them about a certain kind of music? You know when you go to certain events that it's, you, you can you can feel that some events are real sterile and are all about money and, and other events are um, are just real true to, to the music and the people and um, you just have to, to think when you go to these places you know what is this all about and 
and make your own decisions. We're happy if we have a thousand people show up, 900 people, and they meet a few people at the event. That's what makes me happy is meeting other people. That's the most enjoyment I get out of it. You know, I love to see the. I love to make the crowd scream. What was once an alternative to the clubs has now become what goes on in clubs. You know, I think that's one thing that's really interesting to Florida, man. You know, a lot of this stuff does happen in clubs, and there's some really amazing underground things going on. I really don't think that. Uh, the, the country quite quite knows yet, you know, how, you know, what what the, what I what what I would perceive as the more magic things of Florida, you know, just like the like the crowds at Simon's and uh, some of the more magic parties and stuff. State of Florida, Orlando's probably has the biggest rave scene out of you know anywhere in this in this state and I think Florida has almost one of the biggest rave scenes in the whole country. For some reason the uh, rave scene in Florida is just, just tremendous. It's really it's really good. People pay their cover charge and they step inside and it's like it's it's all it's all lights and music to them. There's a lot of stuff that goes on that they don't that they don't even understand is actually going on that night that makes sure that from the time that that thing starts to the time that ends that it, it is a production. I like techno, I like house, I like acid jazz, I love classical music, I love soak me, I love every music, opera, everything. Um, I'm more into the house music. Well, let me see. There's trance, there's techno, there's house, deep house, progressive house. Like, then you got your regular lyrical house with messages, and you got some music that don't have no lyrics at all. Ambient, intelligent techno. The harder acid house sound is coming back a lot more, and you know you hear a lot of songs with acid lines like 303s and stuff. You had a song that's at 190 BPM, but you might have like a little something in the background that's not a beat, and throw all this crazy sounds on it or really mellow sounds in the background and you've got a really chilled out listenable piece. Well, I mean electronic music in general all uses the same equipment, but I mean as far as between dance and ambient, I think where the musician what he's focusing on or what try to or what kind of mood he's trying to get across is where the difference is. just listening to it and you don't like it and you haven't you know gotten in tune with it yet you probably just think it all sounds the same because a lot of it is very repetitive and a lot of it sounds repetitive because when a DJ mixes two songs that have similar beats together it continues and continues all night whereas you know if you can train your ear to listen to it and, and really begin to enjoy it and like it you can hear differences and you, it doesn't all sound alike unfortunately in America you know most of rave culture is pretty much comes from you know, middle class, you know, kids who've grown up on pop radio, hook, chorus, verse, you know, and, and a lot, I see in a lot of scenes, we, we kind of joke around calling it the, 
the post-American rave syndrome, but you know, a lot of scenes the kids really only seem to respond to that hook chorus verse type of music. I actually had someone tell me the other day that they thought it didn't have any soul, which, you know, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it doesn't have any soul. I think it has a lot more soul than a lot of music I hear. I think a lot of people um, think that since it's electronic and it's technical that you just simply, you know, push a couple buttons on a synthesizer and all of a sudden you have this track. People think that if it's not a guitar or something acoustic that just because it has a plug to it, you know, that it's, it's just not real music. Some of those magical things I've ever seen in my, in my travels is, uh, you know, a DJ completely creating magic, you know, making music out, out, of, mu out of music and, and, you know, not just playing, you know, intro to outro, you know, mix in on the intro, mix out on the outro. Computerized lights, computerized music, you know, everything's computers, except for the turntable. Accelerated speed. Somebody decided to make a DJ turntable and they made one and it's like, that's it. And that's the shit, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, that's it. You can go in the worst nightclubs to the best nightclubs, but, you know, there could be two little speakers in, in Test Tim, or you could go in the Ministry of Sound where they have bass bins that fucking power over your fucking head, but you step inside a DJ booth, and I guarantee you there's 1,200 sitting up in there. No matter what kind of mix or anything else they have, that that's the standard right there. very fascinated by the whole concept of DJing, sort of a man versus machine type of thing with, uh, you know, it's you, a piece of plastic, a hollow diamond, you know, with, and the plastic has bumps in it and you create music out of it, you know. I pretty much take them through a journey through my hour and a half or two hours of spinning, you know, it's a journey. You know, I start off, I'll go, I'll start off and then I'll take you up and down, you know, like a roller coaster. All different DJs have different styles and then what they do to you, you know, as a listener, you know, but for me, my main thing, what I try to do is just get everybody dancing and going and listening to the messages positive. My favorite DJ, I have a few of them. Uh, Huda Hoodia, um, The Extreme, Sandy, Orlando, the uh, list goes on and on. A lot of the Florida talent that's around, um, DJ3, who works with us on Hallucination, Chris Fortier, Kimball Collins, Rich Rosario, Chad Allen, um, Grumpy, there's so many people, Icy, um, that have a different thing to say with their music, and they all have their own styles and go through their phases of different types of music, and so they all have their own unique sound, and that's why every, every week we try to get someone different in here. Sometimes that, that hurts us because people want to hear you know, a lot of poppy stuff, and sometimes they're going to hear a lot deeper music or unfamiliar music, but I think I would rather keep it fresh in that sense than have it get stale. <laughs> I, I'm certainly not one for uh, the, uh, the techno snobs or the house snobs or, you know, we can only play this style, we only play this style, you know. It, it, this, all this stuff stems from disco, man, all, all the disco clubs, you know, if, if none of that would have happened, there would be no such thing as this. All right, right now, I'm, right now I'm queuing up this record and I'm waiting for a break on this record and then I'm going to bring this record in. certain venues or certain parties, you'll have a different vibe. Um, you know, certain raves, you'll be able to, to get away with playing a lot more new music and get respected for that. Um, sometimes in the club scene, you have to play certain songs that, you know, that everybody know to get everybody really hyped up. But um, as long as you can mix those popular songs in with, with new music, then that's always gonna keep everybody pumped up and happy about where they're going. My advice as a DJ to anybody else who's trying to work a club is to still, you know, work those popular songs and don't don't get all upset because you hear them every week because you know people have to have to have something to grasp onto. And just work them into your your new music as well, and you're always going to have a, a fairly successful club. 
For me to be able to explain to you everything that I could possibly do with this mixer and these two records right here would really take a long time. best philosophy behind uh, getting into making electronic dance music is if, uh, if there really isn't much music you like, you make it yourself, you know, which is a very well possible for lots of people with technology now. In general, I, I know that music is definitely getting more influenced by electronics. I mean, it's more, it's like every day now you're seeing someone buying a sampler and a mixer and they're doing their own music, you know, it's getting to be that easy. And you can't even keep track of the, all the house music and techno that's coming out because there's so many people making it, you know, you just have to weed through it and um, it's usually the, the stuff that's made by musicians that usually stands out more than just the track stuff, you know, DJs and stuff making some music. Stuff we've been doing lately that me and Ryan have been working on has been like a mixture of using a lot of really like very spacious sounds, a lot of different types of sound effects, going with very hard beats, anything from mellow to very fast, some being really, really slow. You know, it just really depends, but a lot of stuff does have like danceable rhythms in it. I mean, it is very chilled out sounding than a lot of the stuff I guess you hear in the clubs being played, but at the same time it's not as chilled out as some of the ambient stuff that is out. I am influenced by a lot of the recent ambient stuff that's coming out. I, mean, I love, I mean, I think Future Sound London, they're really, good. I mean, these guys, those guys are fucking great. And like, you know, Space Time Continuum, there's a lot of bands lately that I've just recently got into because I haven't been into the whole, this whole ambient thing for long. When it comes time to work on something new, we just kind of gather up all the sounds that we've got, that we've experimented with, and just start playing around, see what happens. You've gathered a lot of ideas and sounds, and you don't think about them, but as you're working, these, these ideas subconsciously just like come about, and these songs happen, and you just sit there and you're like, wow. Anything can happen because you've got sampling, and sampling's basically taken over dance music and you can do anything with a sampler, you can do anything, you can make endless amounts of sounds with synthesizers, um, you can always come up with something new. Mainly been doing a lot of sampling within the studio, that's one thing that we do a lot of, is taking whether it's drum beats that we've programmed or whether it's sounds that we've programmed or a piece or even a line that's being sequenced or something, we'll, we'll run it through effects process it, sample it, mess around with it in the sampler, take that, throw it through more effects, through the mixing board, to resample it again until we just get something, you know, what, until to the point where we're like, oh man, that sounds great, let's not do anything else to it. You can set, that's, each key can have a different sample on it and... <laughs> You just take those and we usually have a bunch of stuff laid out. We'll just start jamming out, play around with a little bit, start coming up with rhythms and then sequence it in the computer and the way we want it and the computer does it back for us. It's, it's not about just using the newest equipment or anything. I wouldn't want to hear you know, a whole night of very overproduced music. On the same time, I wouldn't want to hear a night of stuff that all sounded like it was recorded on you know, a, a TDK D90 or something. You know? so, like someone who's just starting off goes and buys out all the stuff or whatever. He doesn't spend any time with his gear because he's got so much stuff, you don't have enough time to spend on each piece of equipment. And it's really important to spend time with each machine to learn what it can do and maybe pass it, make it do something that it was not meant to do, you know, experiment, do whatever you can do. I'm waiting to see what's going to be the big thing for the future when, you know, what, what it's, what's it going to be? Because I don't think it's around right now. A lot of stuff's just being regurgitated and improved on. But I'm really waiting to see something something really big come out. I mean, with dance music, it's like, you know, you can do everything completely yourself. You know, it's like you make your record, you spend some money, you press your record, you send your record out to people who you think want your record, hopefully they play your record, eventually maybe someone signs your record, you know. It's, it, the beauty of it is, 
you know, it can all be un underground and get commercial, but, you know, there's certainly no problem with it when it's the commercialism that comes to the record after it's done its job in the underground, you know? We'd like our music to to hit, you know, all the raves, to be played everywhere, you know, um, to hit all the clubs. So it's definitely, when you have major label support, that has a, a, a more of a possibility of happening. So you have to always consider that. Um, on the other hand, if you get too big, then you don't get as much respect with the underground scene. So there's a, a gray area that you have to kind of hang in, you know, and that's kind of what we're going to try to do. When we start playing live and it becomes a serious thing, I really want to make it so that people can start focusing on what the musician is actually doing as far as the electronics. I want to make sure that it's, it's as live as possible because it just makes the experience that much more enjoyable, I think, and especially for the person who's up there doing the music because he's not just sitting there. <laughs> I'm sure I speak for Dave as well when, when I say we want to just be able to do what we want to do. I mean, if we make enough money to um, be happy and buy the equipment we want and to make the tracks that we want to and that people continue to buy them and appreciate them, um, I think that's um, the most you could act, ask for on a personal level. I know they have a lot of really good shows they put on where the people come out with glow sticks and float all over their body and, yeah. and you know that's yeah, those, it's getting much more intense. Yeah. Um, the music's coming much more. Uh, yeah, the, the music is developing a lot yeah, more nowadays. So much more uh, digital reconstruction. <laughs> They seem to work out better at larger events and at events where there's a lot of custom, either like a band or or an event that has a really strong theme. Like say a band like Rabbit the Moon wants clouds going by that goes along with the music. See that, that ties it together, it's instantaneous. The reason they call it intelligence is basically because it has a computer, you know, kind of like a brain. and. Uh, the uh, gobos will spin, you can spin them left, right, change colors, and uh, basically build stories with the lights. You know, technical music, it's technical lights, basically. Technology has a, has a lot to do with lights and sound and all that stuff, but uh, at, the, at the end of the day, it really it doesn't have that much to do with the, with the music you're making, you know, it, ha it has to do with human elements. Like, I'm sure someone could develop a software program to, to, to do what I do, but that, that's, everything's digital, everything's all put on tape, and then, and then what happens is I hear the music, and I mix the video to the music to make it, to make it a live music video mix. We want to have people have access to the party. If they, if they contribute to the party, they'll seem that much more real to them. My medium is going to get more and more closer to how I think. I mean, I'm trying to create animations that take like a night to render. I like to do it an hour, a half an hour, ten minutes, five minutes, bam, you know? Do the thing in real time, make the animation in real time. It definitely sets the mood. Without the lights, they don't have, you know, it's, it's not near as much fun, you know? The lights really need to be there. They're really important. It's sad to say, but a lot of stuff you see on fire is just hype.
here at Epic Venue, balcony dance area, massive sound, intelligent lighting, 20 foot by 40 foot LCD projections. If they were to say it, it what it actually was, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't sound as fun. This is where we're going, though. Hyperspace, too. Don't go there for the music. You can go there just to to watch the freaks in action, you know. Or you can just dress up and be a freak for the night, and nobody cares. This is a non-violent scene, you know. Basically, you know, and I, I can't even, like, you know, express that enough. It can be a very friendly environment. I mean, I can't. I count them in the amount of times that I've met someone in the bathroom and they've said, hey, how are you, what's your name? And I told them whatever and, you know, just started talking to me and with them. Two people that now today are like my like soulmates or like my best friends I met in Gainesville. It's all because we let go of all the bullshit. I've been able to be more open with myself and meet more different kinds of people, not being really um, like prejudiced or stuck on people the way they look and the way they act. They were raised with parents who didn't teach them how to love, and a lot of kids find these groups for artificial love, hugs, kisses. I've seen a lot of new styles, like my friend's shirt right here, there's a lot more. I love this guy's shirt, heck to see rolling. You turn around on the back, turn yeah, this out. on film, dude. Yeah, get this on film. Rolling Balls production. Clothes should reflect what you're feeling inside when you go out. Hey, if you're feeling quiet, if you're feeling like hanging back, that's what you should wear. If you're feeling like standing out and having a good time, that's what you should wear. If your hair is rainbow colored, you're still the same person that you are before any of these external things are done. project, you know, and if it gets successful, you know, you have the public have something to identify with, but it doesn't necessarily need to be you or a music video, you know, it can be a symbol, it can be, you know, just something that people can associate with. You realize very quickly that just like anything else, man, you know, business is business, and, you know, you really have to be on top of your shit, you know, every, everyone's your friend until it comes down to talking about money. You know, right now there's a lot of major, major underground artists who have like sold their souls for this shit for years who are getting to major label contracts and stuff and some people are screaming sell out, but man, you know, fuck that. The whole techno and house scene hasn't completely gone, you know, top 40, you know, a lot of cheesy music has, but for the most part the really good underground stuff is still really deeper than what most people know of. I don't think it'll ever become commercialized. It's, it's um, 
Just because it becomes large doesn't mean it's commercialized. I've heard this, that I bring too many people onto the scene, you know, that, you know, it shouldn't be for everybody. And I disagree. I think everybody should know about it. And whoever wants to join it can. But some people don't want these people coming into it and those people coming into it. You know, for, for what reason, I don't really understand. It's selfish. Maybe they want it for themselves. But um, I think everybody should enjoy it. That's great. I mean, it's it's a good thing that a lot of people are liking it. It, it should never be an elite thing. Underground should never be elite. Hey, maybe the whole world will become underground. They're called rave parties. Kids say they're about music and hanging out. Cops say they're often about drugs. It's not really my position to tell anybody, you know, hey, don't do this or that. But um, I think the, the thing that really upsets me more than anything, and it's almost caused me at points in time to get out of the scene, is, um, is the deaths that have happened and the overdoses and, the, and people abusing drugs rather than using them to enhance, you know, the parties or the music or whatever. People should consider what they're putting in their bodies. They should try and know what they're getting or who they're getting it from or something. And, and you know, if they're going to do drugs, maybe moderate them a little more. The drugs have started to come a little bit into the forefront where it gets a little bit scary. And that's because the music has um, become so popular that it can't help you notice. Yeah, and then people who don't really understand what it's all about think that it's about the drugs, and you know that's what what could actually damage a scene. And then what happened is that some of the older crowds saw some of these younger people experiencing things either at a young, too young of an age or when they didn't have enough knowledge about what they were doing, and um, they're, they're you know it's destructive to some people. And then some of the older people see that, and then they get turned off, and they they they're getting shut off from their creative outlet, and. Um, it's kind of sad, but there are things being done about it. Some of the other people, some of the older crowd are educating some of the newer crowd, and, and then, you know, there's been unity there between older and younger, which is, which is good. I can remember a time where it was so beautiful and happy and lovey, and everything was just beautiful, whether it was drug-oriented or not. Something about it was just really positive energy. It can be a mind-opening experience. I've met people that didn't like any music like this until they took ecstasy and now they love it. You used to just put a grin on your face and warm fuzzies. It felt like your bone marrow was boiling and you were just the happiest person alive. And uh, now I see in the clubs kids wired, uh, shaking, very edgy. There's different crowds that, um, you know, some people take drugs, you know, four days a week, you know, five days a week. Some people, every day, you know, um, others once a week or once a month or, you know, in moderation of like um, even a couple times a year, you know, just to make it a, a, a special time instead of every week, week after week, um, damaging people's brains. And I think that really is slowing um, a lot of the, our younger generation up as far as moving ahead with their lives and such. Um, you see a lot of people just really lost and um, dropping out of school or, or failing out of school and what have you, and I think that's kind of bad. I tell them to, to, to get out. You're, you're in it for the wrong reasons. You're not, you're not experiencing this as an outlet. You're experiencing it as, a, as an escape. So. I mean, they have to find it out for themselves. I never go out and tell anybody that because that's one of those things where you have to find out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Just as mm -hmm. with any drug, you know, you have yeah. to either hit rock bottom or, or discover it for yourself. No one can tell you what you can or can't do. But... Yeah, if you see somebody that's dizzy or whatever, you know, go get them some water, you know. We gotta help each other out. That's what makes the scene so positive is everybody does help each other out. Respect the underground. Um, the positive things are just people, you know, meeting each other and, and um, developing a unity or a feeling that, like, you know, we experience this together. So we, we've grown from that together.
some kids are just there and they're only going to be there temporarily and they're out and you know they're, they're partying and eventually they're going to wake up one day and not be so into partying anymore and they're going to leave. The type of people who I'm really interested in who go clubbing are the people who go out on the weekend, you know, dance their asses off, you know, really enjoy themselves for whatever reason, get into the music, such and such, and, uh, you know, have a day of rest on Sunday and, and go back into whatever it is they do, going back into that with that much more energy, you know, because they've really, they've let off some steam or they've, you know, been inspired or what have you. You just have to question the party every time you go into it, you know, and, and if you do that, and relate the, the party to the uh, to the promoters, then you're always gonna um, come out ahead and, and make you know fair decisions. It's good to give a second chance, but if somebody continually you know just is raping the scene and, and, and having parties that are bad, then people eventually pick up on it and they just don't go to those those parties anymore. We could have one doorman for 4,000 people, and there won't be one fight. It's very non violent group of people and um, I think any anything that is positive positive vibes um, is definitely um, worth going and checking out three years ago we heard this electronic music that was so new and unique and wow this could never get any more technological and it already has all of Terrence McKenna's ramblings about you know the whole youth of today is doing the future primitive thing, going back to where we came from in order to understand where we are now, um, it makes a lot of sense, you know, I mean, and dancing, dancing and rhythm are about the oldest things I can think of where people just stand around and become literally entranced by rhythm. The phrase language is a virus can be pretty valid sometimes, you know. True to the music, listen to the sounds, don't don't be overwhelmed by the whole drug um, problem, you know, keep everything into context, don't hurt yourselves, don't hurt your bodies, um, and if that's not what you're all about, then you're not about this, that, this scene, you know, and um, you should probably give it up, but if not, if you're into everything, then and just stay true to the music and everything will be cool. When you're hanging out with your friends and everybody's on a good vibe, a happy vibe, it, it's magical. It's magical. That's, that's, that's what makes Rave so big, is you come here to this thing, you meet a lot of people, you, you, you have a lot of good times, you get big group hugs, and as long as it's a happy vibe, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's you know? the great and that's thing. That's what you're looking forward to the next weekend to go out again. You can take your energy and you can pass it on to someone else. I mean, you can just hug that person and just pass the hug. Just like that. Yeah. Everybody should hug each other a lot more. You know, yeah. this, is, this is. I don't care if it's somebody else's girlfriend. Hug oh, them anyway. No, it's fresh. It's, it's, yeah. it's family. It's family.